If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before listening on. It turns out that this question can be conveniently broken down into two parts. So in part one, we have the bullet colliding and becoming embedded in the block. And because of that situation, we have what is known as an inelastic collision. That's when the two objects that are colliding stick together, essentially. Now, because of that collision, the block and bullet are propelled forward. And so in part two, what's going on is that block and bullet are being brought to rest by the spring. The spring is compressing as the objects move to the right, and that's going to bring them to rest. Now, in part one, because we have an inelastic collision, we're going to be able to use the conservation of momentum. Whereas in part two, since there's no collision going on, we'll have to use the conservation of energy. And it turns out that we're going to begin the problem with part two. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, as the spring is bringing the bullet and block to rest, energy will be conserved, so we can write out the conservation of energy formula. Now, on the initial side of the equation, we're going to see two forms of energy, as well as on the final side. The block and the bullet are moving initially, so we're going to have some kinetic energy. Also, because there's a spring present, we have to incorporate the potential energy of the spring. The bullet and block are not moving upward or downward, so we do not have to concern ourselves in this problem with any gravitational potential energy. Now, initially, the spring is uncompressed. It's just in a relaxed form. So, in fact, the initial potential energy stored in the spring will be zero. On the other side of the equation, because the bullet and block are being brought to rest and they're therefore not moving, there will be no kinetic energy on the final side of the equation. So we can simplify this just a little bit. Now, of course, it's going to be useful to replace kinetic energy with its corresponding expression, as well as the potential energy stored in the spring. Now, you'll notice that 1 half appears on both the left and right hand side of the equation, so we can cancel that. What we can do is solve this equation for the initial velocity, and to do that, we can go ahead and divide both sides by m. And then since we have the initial velocity squared, we'll have to take the square root in order to solve for the initial velocity. Now, all of the values on the right side of this equation are known. K represents the spring constant, which was given to us as 150 newtons per meter. X represents the distance by which the spring was compressed, and that was given to us as 80 centimeters. Note that we'll have to convert that into meters in the equation in order for the equation to work. So that'll become 0.8 meters. And then M will be the mass. Now note that the mass will be of both the bullet and block together since they are basically the same object in this part of the problem. They're embedded within each other. So we'll have to add the mass of the bullet, which was 12 grams, and the wooden block, which is 100 grams. Of course, that's going to be 112 grams. But again, converting to standard units would give us 0.112 kilograms. Now, as long as the values are in their standard units, we don't actually have to write in the units because that can make the expression a little bit cluttered. Notice again that we're squaring the value of x. So if you pick up your calculator and simplify this, you should get approximately 29.3 meters per second. So that's going to be the initial velocity that the bullet and block had right after the collision they experienced in part one of the problem. Now, the key will be to take this velocity and we're going to borrow it and, and bring it back into part one of the question. Let's remind ourselves what part one was. So in part one, the bullet was colliding inelastically with the block. Now, after the collision, the bullet and block took off with some velocity, of course. What we have to realize is that the velocity we just found in part two of the question, remember, which was the initial velocity of the bullet and block before they were compressing the spring, this velocity from part two will become the final velocity of the collision part of this question. So we know from our work in part two that the final velocity will be 29.3 meters per second. Please don't be confused by that. That's the final velocity of part one right after the bullet and block collide. But it became the initial velocity in part two of the question during the conservation of energy. So make sure that makes sense. If it doesn't, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to clarify. But now that we're into the conservation of momentum, we can write down its formula. We'll use subscripts of 1 to represent the bullet and 2 to represent the block. Notice on the right side of this equation, we've combined the masses of the bullet and block together. And that's, of course, because the bullet becomes embedded within the block. So they can be considered a single object. And we have to just simply add their masses together. 
Keeping in mind that the block initially was not moving, we can actually cancel this term out because the initial velocity of the block would have been zero. So that would eliminate this term right here. And now it's just a matter of plugging in. Remember the final velocity, we know, and then the masses were all given. So let's plug in. Notice on the left side we've converted the grams of the bullet into kilograms. So now all we have to do is divide by that number of grams and that will allow us to solve for the initial velocity of the bullet. And after plugging this into your calculator you should get approximately 273 meters per second. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like it, please subscribe. And don't forget that you're welcome to send a picture or a text of your own question to the following email address on the screen.